Hey guys. Today on Days of Glory Shop Works, we're going to do a valve lash adjustment on a 5.9 Cummins. This is a 2006 common rail, and we're going to adjust the valves. They haven't been done. The truck's got a little bit of a vibration in the valve train, and a lot of people say they don't need to be adjusted, but I've been working on Cummins for many, many years, and they have to be adjusted regularly. It just is what it is. They adjust, they move, they wear. So follow along and here we go. Step one, pull the valve cover off. Pretty basic, simple hand tools. And this one is one of the simpler ones to do. So it won't take a whole pile of time. And I'll show you just, this is just doing it in my backyard. six valve cover bolts. And then two wire connectors to get out of the way. Maybe we might leave them in place. And sometimes I pull the uh, wire connectors off the injectors just to make it easier, but we don't necessarily have to. And this honestly is something you can do on any of the five nines. Six sevens have a slightly different valve lash. Uh, five nine, between the min and max for the intake and exhaust, uh, you end up wanting 10 thou intake lash and 20 thou exhaust lash. Now I set them cold and it, they seem to just love it. They get nice and happy and they run super smooth. Like I said, now this thing didn't have a major vibrations or anything valve train. There's no concern for uh, anything else going wrong, but we want it nice and smooth. And if you're ever worried, wondering if your valve cover still has all the factory decals on it, it'll tell you right away where it wants the... Uh, uh, where it wants the min max, or where where it wants your valve lash adjustment, basically. Don't mind my dog in the background; she can see me, but since she can't get to me, she's wondering what the hell I'm doing out here. Here I'm just popping off the valve cover breather tubes. There's two of them. One's kind of a PVC, the other's a, uh, I guess you'd call it a stink pipe, I suppose. Hopefully you guys can still see that. Looks good. Here's hope. You know what? I'm just going to pull that valve cover out of the way. So now I am going to need 
an Allen key and a 916 wrench. Be right back. All right, so what I like to do when I'm doing a valve lash adjustment is I will uh, take the, uh, the starter wire off. There's a little connector over here, yellow one on these engines, on these model years. Just disconnect the wire connector, and then I run a jumper wire into it because it goes straight to the starter. Let me just jump it right off the positive post of the battery. If you're running a manual transmission, you obviously want it to uh, uh, be in neutral because it'll turn over independently of the ignition key being on. The yellow wire. Simple jumper. That's it. Two spade terminals. And uh, I believe that's, uh, I want to say, a 12 gauge wire. Doesn't have to be crazy big, but then you just bounce it off the uh, top. And I'm looking for both, both uh, rock arms not moving. There we go, we'll do number six. I like to start far away. gets easier as you come forward. So. so we'll check. Yeah, he's loose. I just I leave my feeler gauge in place and then I tighten them by hand till it stops moving just lightly and I hold the adjuster screw and you just got to cinch the jam nut you do not have to cram them down just a little cinch and then we check Oh yeah, nice. Now let's see if we can do that another 11 times. So I go straight to the intake valve for number six. Now if you want a little bit more room, you can pull the uh, wiring harness off, but there is potential to break the studs off the injectors. On these models, I've really found you don't need to. The newer ones with the different valve cover, yeah, it's a lot handier. It gives you a uh, like on the six sevens, it gives you much more room because it's a two-piece valve cover, and then the wiring is just a little bit more in the way. But when you can get away without it, wouldn't do it. And yeah, this one's loose as well, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm going to find consistently along. Yeah, I got a bit of quarter turn out of these two. And yeah, just a little bit of drag. Perfect. All right, and that's it for number six. Like, that's it, guys. So, on to number five. I always give them one extra bump after they stop moving just to make sure that they're not on the edge of the lobe of the cams to make sure they're fully on the base circle. And then we know we're getting the right adjustment. And yeah, there's many ways to do it. You can rotate the engine like, I think, two full crankshaft revolutions and do it at certain points. But really, I find this just to be, oh yeah, he's loose. I find this just to be better for me. Doesn't have to be better for you, but this is how I like to do it. And we 
Let me check. Yep. Good, we're three for three. So he was a little bit looser, but or a little bit tighter, but that just shows the inconsistency that's there. And this engine has had good maintenance its whole life. According to the manuals, no reason to adjust. Well, guess what? You know what? I made him a little tight. Let's just back him up. That's cylinder number five, two down. It's not rocket science, and anybody can do this. Six, five. See, by doing the other ones, they're far under, kind of a pain to reach. But now you can see me rocking that rocker arm. I hope you can anyway. And anyway, that means it's at least a few thou tight. Now, is it still within the maximum spec? Probably. But they just run so much smoother, so much nicer. I should have actually fired it up for you guys beforehand, but I like working on cold engines for this. Should go just a touch more. No fun dropping your Allen key. Now, if you don't want to get oil, dirty diesel oil all over your hands, it stains right in. You should wear gloves. I actually normally do wear gloves, but this morning I just want to get this going and get her on the move. Beautiful. Oh yeah, loose. Not bad actually, but this is the inconsistency I'm talking about. Like, how can they say never adjust them for life when they're this inconsistent? Besides, there's nothing wrong with a good bit of basic maintenance. I think we could all do a little more of it. Beautiful. All right, 
Time to cylinder number three. Always good to wipe the oil off just to make sure you're using the right feeler gauge. Easy to get mixed up when you're in the zone, giving her. Oh yeah, he's loose as anything. And I'm not concerned about the looseness. Like this is, I've, I've seen this consistently over the years, doing diesels, doing Cummins, and oh my. And anyway, it doesn't surprise me, so I'm not worried about looking for any further issues of any kind. We're okay. I always kind of try and hold the, uh, the adjuster screw back a little bit while I'm tightening. Like I said, we don't tighten hard. But if you don't, just like that, then you end up over tightening and we don't want to over tighten and again keep on going until we're happy He just needs like a minor, minor tweak. <clears throat> hey, didn't drift my skin. Nice. Oh yeah, we got happy drag there. See, we're ripping through this in minutes. Onto the intake. The intake actually feels too tight on this one. say that's like the left valve but I'm not in a hurry I'm doing this for a good friend of mine so I'd like to do a good job so even a small adjustment is worth it there we go and just like that we're down to cylinder number one guys Again, we bump it over and make sure 
That's in intake just closed. We should be good to go. Yep. Exhaust. Loops. See how much that's moving? It's probably only about four thou, but that puts it just about right at the max spec, so we definitely want it tighter. Yeah, good quarter turn. Oh, so nice. I love doing this stuff. Oh, he's loose. Oh, yeah, wow. And like I said, they're probably at the max spec and safe, but we can do better. Yeah, actually, just shy of a quarter turn. Mm, I'm going to go a touch tighter. And that's too tight. <laughs> of course, on the last one we start to get screwy. Jeez, I just wanted that a little bit more though. There we go. Yeah. All right, and that is literally that. Take my oily tools, wash my hands right quick, and then we'll put the valve cover back on. You don't have to worry about valve cover gaskets or anything the like. Be gentle when you're sliding this in because you can knock a bunch of dirt into the engine. But this vehicle is actually very clean inside under the engine bay. So again, we don't have to worry about that. I always like to center up the valve cover a little bit, just wiggle it back and forth while I start the bolts. And then it just, you know, it sort of finds its home, I guess. It seats on in maybe back to the exact same spot it was, but maybe it's just something for my brain. It makes me happy. And it feels like it's not going to leak or have any issues. And again, same thing with the valve cover gaskets. I don't know the torque spec. I haven't ever looked it up, but you just gotta cinch them down. I'm gonna say maybe like eight to 10 foot pounds maximum. I don't even think that much. Like most things, I like to start in the middle and work my way out. That's it. Once they go down and bottom, they are especially bulky. I have a shoulder. Once they go down and bottom, just an extra little that. Never gonna vibrate loose, never gonna cause a leak. Simple and dependable.
And I know I just tightened them, but I still double check. And then these two. Very basic tools. You need a 10 thou and a 20 thou feeler gauge, whether you get the angled ones or straight ones. Doesn't matter, you can still make them work. I like the angled ones, and I was doing enough of these things at the time that I bought the fancy ones with the, uh, they already had the handles on them. So yeah, I'll put these tools away and then I'll connect the hoses and reconnect the starter. I always like to give her a quick little wipe off any oily fingerprints. Just kind of makes for a nicer job at the end of it, you know? Shows that you care what you do. So now, here is the uh, breather hose. This goes above it. And it's hard to show, but I just gotta wiggle it in place. Done. And this is the PCV or another breather. And here's that starter wire right here. So I'll take my jumper out. Done. And reconnect. There you go. Make it roll, make it click. And just wipe off anything you might have left behind. And now the last thing to do is to fire it up. This is one of the few trucks I know of that hasn't ever been shipped in its whole life. It's crazy. Everybody I know, they're all chipped up and double stacked and bigger turbos and bigger injectors. And I drove this thing on about an hour drive yesterday and I must say, it's beautiful to drive a stock one. I miss it. Haven't driven a stock clean engine like this in a long time. Now, I mean, the truck has exhaust on it and a cold air intake, that kind of jazz, but which it does look like the air filter needs to be serviced, not gonna lie. But here we go. Even in the summer, wait till the glow plugs cycle off. Usually they're pretty quick on a Cummins. All right. Boy, don't that sound good. Beautiful. guys that's it in a nutshell uh, my camera says a total of 33 minutes you can knock off about five or eight minutes for looking for tools and that's it so for under 30 minutes you can adjust your valves at home with the most basic of tools and a couple of feeler gauges hope you enjoyed please like subscribe and share and we'll uh, catch you on the next video